Hey I'm Joe Deganzik. Welcome back to Lighting Answers. This episode is completely out of order. I promised uh, a while back that we were going to do this uh, mini-series on color and light. And it's still going to happen, but uh, times are sort of changing rapidly and I want to put this out there, not just for my um, viewing audience of Lighting Answers, but also a lot of people kind of look to me for technological advice it's not the right way to say it. No one says that anyways. Uh, you know, people are looking for the latest gadget, they're looking for the latest phone, tablet, computer, whatever. Uh, technology in general, and they always uh, are generally asking me questions. So there's a lot of hype coming up with Apple's announcement. And you might be thinking, well, what does it have to do with home automation or lighting or design or kitchens or anything like that? Uh, it has a lot to do with it because of what they talked about in June, which was this, um, they have a, it talked a lot about many different things, but I'm going to narrow this down to talking about home automation and the internet of things, things like the Nest thermostat, lighting, home automation, all those things, the little plug-in things that you can control, you can control your oven, all these different devices that we've got the ability to talk to these days, but the question now is it's practicality, its relevance, it does it does it work very well, and how does it improve your life? And you may be saying, well, I'm an Android fan, I don't like Apple, I don't subscribe to that whole thing, I'm not a fanboy. Okay, whatever. But we know what Apple did for various products throughout the past, eh, let's just say 30, 40 years, starting with the Apple II, the Mac. Uh, when the iMac came out and Apple was sort of reborn, the iPod, the iPhone, the, I, you know, the iPad, all these different devices, in fact, I should probably have it in my hands since I need to demo stuff. This is just such a highly uh, professional show. But anyways, uh, we know what Apple's done. Uh, they've been sort of the leader, the pioneer on many different fronts. And this time around, we're not really sure what they're going to do. They're, we know they're going to introduce a new phone, at least one. Um, speaking of controlling bridges, there's, there goes my fridge, so that's that's great. Uh, anyways, um, they're going to introduce one larger phone, we think. Uh, people are pretty set on that. The specs, you can debate the specs all you want online. There may be another larger phone, and there may be some sort of wearable device, whether it's some sort of fitness device, a heart rate monitor, a watch. Who knows? I haven't worn a watch in over 12 years, and I'm, honestly, I don't like wearing things. Anyhow, what does this have to do with home automation? Well, they introduced something um, to their developers, people who write the apps and all this stuff, back in June called HomeKit, and they introduced something else called HealthKit. Kit, you know, being the, the term. No one has been able to take home automation and make it something that's practical for the every person. Now, you may be saying, well, no, I can go down to Home Depot nowadays and buy all these little devices and I can get a controllable thermostat and I can do all this cool stuff. Isn't that home automation? Isn't that the internet of things? I can get wireless cameras and drop cams and all this cool stuff. But no one's really brought it together and no one's really brought it together across all the manufacturers. The latest thing that we have is we have all these hubs. Um, I don't have one here. Uh, it's in my other, um, I have sort of a software hub that allows my home automation system to talk to different technologies. Uh, as I've uh, sort of demoed uh, in the previous episodes, these Hue lights have one language, then the Insteon system that I use for lighting control is another system. Then of course you've got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, all these different languages that no one wants, no consumer is going to bother spending the amount of time that I have spent um, trying to set all this stuff up and make it work. They don't have time for it. I have some good friends who actually have uh, one of these hub devices. Uh, it only speaks one main language for the devices that they have, but it allows them to easily just take these little devices that they can get from the store, plug them in, link them to this hub, and boom, they can control their whole home on an app on their smartphone, you know, whatever it would be, Android, Apple, uh, iPhone, and you know, for those people who are running Windows or Blackberry, you know, uh, they've got that stuff too. But my main point is Apple is poised to change the game. And I want everyone to remember that September of 2014 is when home automation and the Internet of Things, and 
buzzword that everyone loves to use, is going to go mainstream. We're not quite sure how, we're not sure how long it's gonna take because these devices that are coming out are still flaky, they're not perfect, there's still a million of them and consumers don't know what to buy. They just, they will go to the store and buy the next shiny thing, get it home and hope that it's going to be great. And there's a lot of changes going on in many industries. Obviously, this show talks a lot about lighting and LED lighting. And I also am getting in a little bit earlier than I was planning um, to get into the home automation game. Now, I myself have been in the home automation game doing it since 19, uh, well, let's see, 1993. Let's just say that. That's when I personally got into home automation. A couple years later, I moved from just little control panel buttons uh, on X10 to basically something that I could have scene control. And a few years after that, I hooked it up to the web um, through a whole DIY kit. It was nothing that I could just go download some app or something like that. I had to make it myself. And here's the thing. People who've been doing home automation, and some people would associate that with the rich and famous, you know, control your drapes and your, your theater and your TV pops out of the wall and all these kind of things. We've assumed that it's you have to be wealthy or you have to be a nerd to do it. And these days it's getting to the point where everyone is gonna be able to do it and we're gonna see some terrible, terrible implementations of home automation. And you're gonna see all the YouTube videos, we're already seeing them. People will convert their whole homes, I don't know why, to the Hue bulbs or the uh, LifeX uh, color changing LED bulbs and turn their home into a complete uh, light show. They'll turn it into a disco club. And we're gonna talk lots about that on on the color series but right now it's home automation is about to get mainstreamed i was going to say samsung but <laughs> home automation is already samsung there's a zillion manufacturers out there putting out a zillion products and to show you know what i always want to convey on this show is something that is practical it's practicality and i have taken a long time to develop home automation into something that's practical for me it fits my daily life, it fits my home environment. Um, I've moved from you know 21 years ago, back in 93, just having push buttons to where I can do things like this through geolocation and through smart technology and apps and so forth. I can literally just say, all right, it's time to go out. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave all the lights on and I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, leave and lock up the place. So of course I didn't really leave, and uh, you know. So, and, but uh, but if I had, we we faked this. But uh, but at the end of the day, with geolocation, the lights simply would turn off uh, automatically, and it would go into a way mode. You can actually, if you can see the little red dot there on the on one of the uh, control panels, uh, that's the indicator that the away mode was turned on by the system automatically because I left a certain range. Um, and depending on the time of day, if I uh, was leaving more at night then it would simply go to an automated scene control instead of uh, just turning them off during the daytime. And I can resume where we were and go back to bring up a little light on me. Something like about that. Or there. Whatever. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we've got so many ways to do so much automation and technology. And when it works well, it works really well. And this geolocation thing is a little bit of a kludge, honestly, and uh, it's through uh, IFTTT and a uh, pairing with my Hue bulbs and then, you know, tied into an app with the iPhone. But it works about 70% eh, of the time, uh, not because the geolocation is bad, but because the linkage between the Hue system and uh, the Hue bulbs and IFTTT is not really quite there. So that's the challenge. That's the issue that we're having is we've got all this technology that's been thrown at us, smart lights, smart appliances, smart door locks, you know, but all this cool stuff isn't gonna be great if we don't have an easy way to control it all. And that's what Apple's trying to do with this home kit is to create a central place in your iOS device, like an iPad, an iPhone, an iPod Touch, what have you, or maybe even this wearable Combine it with Siri to be able to say something such as good night, you know. Um, 
I have been using uh, sort of a good night type mode for months, years, just because I have all this stuff set up. Um, I can't say it because Siri doesn't understand this stuff. Um, and honestly, voice control, voice control works at the appropriate time. I think voice is a specialized use case for controlling things. It's not applicable, it's not uh, useful in every situation, but for some things it is. Uh, it's been more of a gimmick over the past couple of years, um, and now it's slowly working its way into uh, the mainstream and it's being more and more useful. And for something like a wearable, like a watch, that you could instantly get status updates or perhaps it could interact with some kind of sensor in your home that would know exactly that you're home uh, or not, that would be super. Uh, even the Nest, the Nest thermostat has sensors in it. Um, it's famous for having its motion sensor, which is great because the Nest automatically sets itself to away mode after it figures out that you're not doing anything at home, or at least no one's moving. Uh, during the daytime, it tends to think, if I'm watching a movie, it tends to think it's gone to auto away and it starts getting warm uh, during the summers. But anyways, we have all this, these sensors. The Nest doesn't currently really talk to anything else. Uh, in terms of you can't use that sense, uh, those uh, sensors in any other devices or automation. But we are getting to the point where we think that Apple is going to tie this stuff together. And if you're, like I said, if you're not a, uh, an, a fan of Apple products, if you're not a fan of anything, this is going to trickle down, right? We, we know that uh, Android's project was completely upended after they saw the iPhone release and they had to completely come up with something, a whole new strategy, as did pretty much every other phone manufacturer. And the same happened with tablets uh, once we got to the iPad. Even though the iPad technically, realistically, is a very large screen iPhone or iPod Touch, it just changed the game. Apple's not necessarily changing the game with a device this time, it's through software that's running on their devices, but I have a feeling it's going to trickle down to all the other ecosystems, Windows, and uh, I want to say Blackberry, but I, they're just so far behind the times that it just doesn't matter. Uh, but Android for sure, and the world is mobile. It's pretty much, you're probably not going to be doing this on your laptop or on your desktop because we are mobile. We, we've got phones in our pockets, we carry around tablets, uh, some of us, and we've got, uh, for the very few of us, we've got some sort of wearable device. I think it is a very exciting time. I can't, and I don't want to predict what the future is going to be. I could say in six months, everyone is going to have autom home automation, and every device is going to be $9.95 down at your local Lowe's, Home Depot, Radio Shack, electronics store, Best Buy, what have you but I could be completely wrong. I think that we're at least a year away at this point from having devices that are absolutely uh, much more reliable and that we've got sort of these hub devices that will speak multiple languages so you could buy devices. You could buy a dimmer from this company, you could be a, buy a smart light bulb from another company, you could buy a fridge from another company, and all these things would talk um, together. And whether it's done through these um, hubs or whether everything ultimately goes back to the cloud, so to speak, which introduces lots of security challenges, as we've had this week with those celebrity photos. Um, there's been a lot of people talking about that the Internet of Things, all these smart devices, this is a brand new hacking opportunity. And yes, absolutely, I have my home connected to the Internet multiple ways, and it is possible that I could get hacked any minute now. It hasn't happened thus far, um, because it's not a huge thing, but potentially it could be a huge problem. You know, people uh, having lights left on, uh, your heating system being left on. So, so many different problems could be, uh, could, well, could arise basically. So there could be so many issues um, with people being able to hack into some sort of home automation system or your individual devices. All these things are going to be have to worked out or going to have to be worked out over the coming months and years as this stuff goes mainstream. We've seen it, technology goes mainstream and then it shows all the sort of societal problems that we still have and that we need to deal with. So September 9th, Tuesday, uh, 10 a.m. is their announcement. You could watch it live, you could watch it later, you could just read the news and you'll find out about it. So it doesn't matter whether you're, you're in the market for some, to, uh, some type of new device or even if you care, but home automation, which has had that cool factor, that sort of mystery factor for so many years, is coming soon to your home.
and it'll be available at a lower price and you'll be able to do it yourself and not hire someone for thousands of dollars to try and hook something up. And so it is going to be a very exciting time and we are definitely going to cover and follow all of this right here on Lighting Answers. You may think that Lighting Answers is a bad name for a show that covers so many different things and trust me, we had a team of experts working for months. Not really. Uh, we <laughs> I tried to come up with an appropriate name for it, but my world is lighting and it is also home automation and all this internet of things and these devices. So I just figured we're going to center it around lighting and we'll just kind of branch out from there. So uh, that's the end of the episode. If you like us, support us on Patreon. You can find us uh, Lighting Answers on Patreon. Send us a couple, a couple bucks or a couple cents. Uh, here's all of the ways to get a hold of us uh, through social media. And uh, if you've got questions, send them to questions at answers.lighting and we'd love to take those and answer them on the next show. The series for uh, the mini series, the four part episode mini series for lighting and color and how they interact and how to design and all this kind of cool stuff is already recorded. It just has to be put out there. We're going to put it out there at a certain moment. I am actually moving in a month and a half, so I have to pick this whole place up and uh, shrink it into a new place and uh, repaint the walls and all this cool stuff. So it's going to be exciting and you'll get to see me go through a whole new design, a whole new lighting plan in the new space, which is actually going to be really, really exciting. So uh, stay tuned for that and we're all going to see what uh, Apple announces on Tuesday and how it affects the world going forward. And uh, that's how Apple ties into home automation. I'm Jody Ganzik, this is Lighting Answers, and I will talk to you next time.